How do I pronounce your name correctly? It's on. On, okay. It's pronounced on and spelled in. Okay. Okay, on, do you do any particular type of sports activity or anything? Yeah, I, I play for the last two years, I've been doing jujitsu. Through what? Jujitsu. Oh, jujitsu. Okay. Good. All right. Okay, on when you're ready, go ahead and pick your pelvis up off the floor. That's it. And you're going to have to pick up higher because you're a strong man. Let your hands rest at your side. That's it. Can you go all the way up to your shoulder? That's it. So when I see sports people and I see tight muscle structure, here's the trick. I have to stress your body to the degree that I can meet the strength of your muscles. If it's not strong enough, it won't be effective. If it's too strong, it'll just contract. So we have to meet you at your ability. Is this okay for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I can see your body's bouncing. So that means that the normal holding pattern that you use is starting to break up a little bit because this is an unusual position. So it's breaking up a little bit, which is what we need to help facilitate the tremor mechanism moving more easily through your body. And there's the rocking back and forth. Now, when you tremor, um, do you get tremors up to your shoulders or your neck or just your pelvis? Where does it go? So usually it's in the pelvis area. Sometimes I feel the, sh the stretch in the shoulder area, but it's not a full body. Okay. Yeah, I used to have sometimes. Okay, cool. All right, so now just close your knees a tiny little bit. Right there, that's all. That's it, just wait there. And on, you can keep your head looking straight up at the ceiling because I don't want you to have your neck twisted. However, when you talk to me, you'll probably have to face the camera just because of the audio. But other than that, keep your head straight up and just relax. Yeah. There. See, that's how long it took for us to wait for the structure to move itself. The body never moves at the speed of the ego. It has its own pace. And we have to be patient enough to move at the body's speed because it'll show us when it's ready to move. Yeah. See, and you just wait and, and, and trust it. So now a tiny little bit again, very little, you're going to close your knees. Good, just like that. See, that movement is still a little bit kind of disorganized. It's confused a little bit. And I can see that it's moving in two or three different directions at once. And so we want to give it time to figure out how to reconnect all the tissue. Yeah, that's the rhythm there. It's like a pulsation in the body. And that intensity and calming down, what it's doing is it's kind of pulsating itself to open up and contract and open and contract until it can finally stay open. Close your knees a little more. Change. Good for you. You can feel that. That's right. They've changed. See, those little changes is what we wait and look for because it's telling us, it's showing us the inside of the body. Something just shifted inside the body. So the movement changes outside. There you go. You can feel it more now in your pelvis. And there's more rhythmic movement now. So something's been able to connect. Also, this movement feels different. Like How so? Much, Can you describe it? Like it feels a lot more uh, relaxed, actually. Like, you know, it feels a lot more relaxed. Like, when I'm moving it this, like, when it's moving it like this, it feels like it's like natural. Like, it feels quite Yeah. Special. Good. So this movement is rhythmic. Something has been able to connect the, the movement. It has a rhythmic sense to it that relaxes the body because there's now it's restored some sort of connection. Whereas before it was a little chaotic because different things weren't connected and they were all moving in different ways. And now a rhythm has happened. And so we can see that. So that's telling us that, yes, it's using this tremor mechanism 
to restore connection to all the different tissue patterns. So go ahead and close your knees some more. And it's in the lower back. Yeah. Yeah. See, by making you close your knees slower, I'm generating a stronger um, vibration that can push itself through your body easier because I can see that your body's very strong. So we need a strong tremor. If it's too weak, it won't be able to. Uh, there you go. Well, there you go. There's a nice loosening in your lower back. I can see that. I, for the last two days, I think I used to have like this lower back pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can feel it sort of like just hitting the right spot kind of thing, you know? Good. <laughs> yes. Well, see, that's very important to know. If you've had lower back pain, then that means your muscles were tightly contracted. So if we want the tremor mechanism to loosen the contraction, it has to be strong enough to be able to do that. And yeah. so that's, that's what's happening now. It's, it's finally gotten big enough that it can slowly tease those tight muscles to loosen. There, now see how it's almost consistently staying in your lower back there. That's what we need. Yeah, that's starting to loosen you. I'm just waiting for your hips to loosen a, loosen a little bit more because I think they're going to be able to rock back and forth and really loosen your lower back. Uh-huh. Can you move your shoulders, like pull your shoulders up towards the ceiling? That's it. Move them up like that. And then drop them down. There you go. All right. You're doing good. Okay, so there we've got the tremor mechanism going up to your neck. You can just keep looking up at the ceiling. You don't have to face me because we need your neck to be in a straight position. So now that you've got this movement, we can see that the tremor mechanism is able to get up your body further and your lower back is loosening beautifully. There you go. Bring, turn your feet flat on the floor and move them about three inches apart and your knees wider apart than that. That's it, just like that. Now just, just relax and breathe there. We're just gonna let it loosen you up a little bit. There you go. Take a breath and relax with that on. It's a beautiful thing. Your body's just coming to life right there. Ah, just give in like, oh, the struggle's over. Your body won. We'll let it stay like this for a little bit because it's loosening up your neck. So that's good. And then we'll work a little bit more on your shoulders because I can see they're still tight. They're holding real strong. So we'll loosen those a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna try to help your shoulders a little bit more. So go ahead and pull them up towards the ceiling and then let them drop. That's very key. Don't set them down, let them drop down. There you go, see your hips are releasing now. You're getting that little rocking back and forth. So. But it takes this long for that to do that because your structure is really strong. See, oh, look at that nice release. Oh, your shoulders are excited. The hips and shoulders often are very connected. There you go. It made it after all that time. It finally got there. So once your hips release like this, then your shoulders are going to try to follow that release. That's beautiful. All that trebering loosens your spine enough that it can now move itself. That's what this rocking is. So actually twisting your spinal column because it can now. The tightness along the spine is letting go. If you notice when it twists to your left, there's still a tightness in that twist. Whereas when it twists to the right, it drops all the way down to the floor and there's a, a bigger twist. Okay, so now we're gonna come out of that twist and the way to do that is move your feet wider apart. Like my, my hands are stretching in two different directions. That's wonderful, yeah, it should go all the way down to your hands. We'll do some interventions there, but I wanna wait and see what the body's gonna do first. Wow. That's very nice. Where do you feel it's trying to stretch you when it moves your arm like that? Like my biceps? Yeah. Good. Good for you. That's right. 
you have the biceps and the pectoral muscles, which pull the body tightly forward. They're stretching out here. Because you do a sport, most people who do sports have really tight bodies in the front of their body because they build up their biceps, they build up their pectoral muscles, but then the back of the body is weaker. <laughs> And it's still being the stretch sort of like um, now in the bicep, all like in the upper parts of my arm. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So what we're going to do to try to help your arm, since we know that's where the tremor is trying to go, is you're going to squeeze your fist really tight, like squeeze your whole arm tight like that, and then let it go and then squeeze it tight again and let it go. Good, now just relax and let your body do it by itself now. See how you can work with this structure? When you know where it wants to go, we're just kind of helping it. We basically said, oh, we see what it's trying to do, trying to loosen those muscle groups. There you go, now it's connecting your shoulders and your neck again. See how it keeps pulling your neck back like that? Like it wants to elongate my spine. Like yes, perfect. Good for you. So what I want you to do to help that, you're going to do the opposite. Since it pulls your head back, you're going to pull your chin towards your chest. That's it. And then let it go. Let it go back again. And you're going to help create the movement. So if it keeps pulling you back, you keep pulling it forward. And that way it will learn that it can make both of those movements and elongate your spine. There, see, you just did something to yourself, right there. Your body's just saying, thank you, that helped me. That's what I was trying to get to. Good for you. Take a nice breath, relax, and enjoy it. Your body's playing with you now. There you go, it's nice and deep. If you can relax into it, it's great. I know it feels a little weird, but you're fine. That's it. Your breath is really helping it. That nice, just relaxed breath. Just breathe out nice and easy like you're laying down in bed and just letting go. Because that moves your diaphragm and the intercostal muscles of the rib cage, and that gives that tremor mechanism easier space to move. Uh-huh. Yes, it's definitely elongating your spine. No question about it which means, okay, great, all the tightness is coming out of your back, so you're gonna have much more flexibility. In your sports activity, you, you should probably feel that right away. Because see, flexibility should be effortless. You shouldn't have to try to be flexible. That's it, see, it's back down into your hips again. Oh, look how deep that is. Now that's doing something really deep in your hips. See that? That's your hips and your shoulders. Again, they're in dialogue. They're trying to work together to loosen you up. Ah, oh, look how loose your neck is becoming. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so you did a great job with that. Now slide your legs down, straight onto the floor, and just rest there for a second. You might get some residual movements. Just let that happen. So just relax. So here's what I'm gonna do with you now. We've worked with your body, both left and right sides and we got that spine to relax. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a chance to move each side individually because there are different tension patterns all the time on the left and right sides. So bring your right knee up. Now just notice where you feel the movement. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah, for sure. It's in your lower back, all the way up to your mid-back. 
You see that jerkiness in your hip? That's a real indicator that there's something still tight there. So I'm trying to just give it a chance to loosen that some more. See how it plays around in there? It moves from one place to the next. It knows how to loosen itself. There, something's loosening up now. That's it, there it goes. But see how it's still jerky, so it's not smooth. So that tells us that there's still tightness in the tension or in the muscle groups, but it's getting rid of it. And it's connecting your right hip with your left shoulder. And that's called a crossover fascia pattern. You're an amazing human being. You're living in a body that's remarkable. And you get a chance to feel what it can do. It's an alive organism. It's moving itself. What's that? Great, great. That's good. All you do is follow because we can see how it's systematically releasing different sections of your body at different times so that it can finally put it all back together again. Okay, so now it's gone back into that rocking thing. So it's just going to get more space. But at this point, I'm going to have you slide your right leg down flat onto the floor. Okay, so now bring your left leg up. And let's see what that's going to show us. Yeah, see, it's going all the way down your right leg. That's perfect. Boy, that's really cool. It's connecting your, your, all the way from your foot to your neck. Going out your shoulders, out your arms. It's wonderful. Uh, see your right shoulder and right arm with your right leg. Are you dominant on your right side? Yeah. Okay, so that's showing up here. It has a stronger tension pattern, and it's got to release that. That's beautiful. Look what it's doing to your shoulders. That's really nice. There you go. See, it needs you to breathe sometimes to help release that chest cavity. That's it. Follow that. There's a nice stretch. Yeah, your body's trying to see how it's trying to stretch that chest. It's arching your back like that. It's going to open up the front part of your body. It's too tight because of your sport activity. That's it. Breathe with that. And breathe through your mouth so that you get a, a nice deep breath through your throat. When you breathe through your nose, the breath is too small. That's it. There you go. It's going to get it. It's going to stretch you out, and then you'll get this big vibration, and it will release. Just hang in there with it. That's it. Okay. Now it's starting to release. Go ahead and slide your left leg down. Just lay there relaxed. There could be some residual movement. Good. Now it's moving a different set of muscles in your legs. Okay, we'll do one last intervention and then we'll stop. Listen to this carefully. What I want you to do is bend your knees very slightly so they come off the floor and then drop them. That's it, just like that and drop and do that 10 times. Nope, just don't do it anymore. It's okay, one time was enough. Your body got it. Do you see how that tiny intervention made such a big difference in the movement? That was your quadricep muscles that I was trying to release. So I had you just tighten your quads a little bit by bending the knee and then drop it. And then the quads were able to loosen up. Quadricep muscles are in the top part of the leg. Oh, you have something real tight in your right hip still. It's going to get it out. See how it's extending your feet like that? Yeah, these are different muscle groups and different fascia patterns that it's releasing. There, okay, now it did it. See that? Now it can move. That's all it wants to do. So it wants to move. And I love that it's moving now. Yeah, it feels rhythmic. It feels connected. It feels lovely. And you can see it in the video. You can see how, oh my God, my body's relaxed. It moves and it's fluid. Okay, I think your body's done. So we're going to stop this. So what I'm going to have you do is you're going to roll over onto your side. 
come into a sitting position gently, that's it. And then I want you to stand up and walk around the room very slowly. 